Greetings, fellow science buffs. I am speaking today with my dear friend, Dr. Rick Newman. Rick Newman is the president and CEO of R&D Services, Inc. R&D Services provides a variety of regulatory, clinical, preclinical, and strategic development services to companies in the medical field, large and small around the world. <laughs> Rick, thanks so very much for talking to me. Question one. What is a transgenic genetically modified organism? Everyone has different definitions for these things, but basically when people are talking about transgenic uh, organisms, they're talking about taking the genetic code, the DNA from a cell and inserting or removing some portion of it to give it special characteristics such as drought resistance, saving the natural resources. And it goes the entire gamut from watering to putting in and allowing certain genetic organisms to be resistant to certain diseases or pests. You are saying that the big agribusiness companies are inducing our plants to produce and thus us to eat pesticides. Companies like Monsanto and other companies they look at what is causing these plants to be destroyed by certain insects or disease or drought, and they are modifying the DNA. So it's not like you're inserting a new chemical into the uh, DNA, but you're inserting some genetic code which may cause the plant to produce different proteins or various changes that would make it not so tasty to whatever insect may be coming or repel it. Or if it's to the point where it kills that particular insect, that's a possibility too. So you're pretty sanguine. You're not frightened of Franken food. I think when it comes to genetic manipulation, whether it's for food or for uh, choosing the color of the eyes of your baby or preventing the BRCA gene from being passed down from one generation to the next. Uh, all of these things are genetic modifications and they should all be done with a certain modicum of caution. But caution doesn't mean fear to the point where you don't do anything. With the right regulation, oversight, and testing, it can be fine. And in fact, when you get right down to food, genetic manipulation has been going on through uh, people taking one color of corn plant to mix with another so they get consistently yellow corn as opposed to the maize that the Indians had. I mean, that process of mixing and matching and breeding for the purposes of cows that produce more milk, Kobe beef that you get from Japan that's so prized. I mean, that's all genetic manipulation. It's just done at different levels. And one is on the most primitive way, which is mixing and breeding them until you get what you want versus taking their genetic material directly and determining what portions of it and mixing and matching to the point that you get the same result in a much faster time frame. Well, Dr. Rick Newman, President and CEO of R&D Services, and my good buddy, thanks so much for talking to me. Thank you so much for watching. For the record, I consider Monsanto's business practices borderline tyrannical and am astonished they are even legal, but that is for another video. If you enjoyed this one about the science of GMOs, please like, subscribe right here. Or if you'd like to see some of my other science videos, check these out. So like, subscribe, thank you so much for watching, and I hope this is the best day of your life. I love the